four four? Everybody runs four four, it seems like. Does he run four four? I hope not. <laughs> Looking forward to some big time punting competition. Yeah, I could already feel those kind of, feel those questions coming right away, or that comment coming. The, the Ohio State Michigan deal is going to be a big uh, training camp story. So, no, we feel fortunate. We felt uh, uh, I feel very good about Brad. Um, you know, he brings something different that we haven't had here in a bit. He's a uh, hang time guy. He loves to get the ball up and, and does a really good job of getting great hang time. I think he led college football the last two years in, in hang time. So. Um, you know, it's uh, unique too. The how many the last couple of punters we've had here, Kevin, and then uh, Drew, and then obviously Brad. Brad's from Columbus, so uh, we, we like to keep it here in the Midwest. Yeah, why, why a draft pick and maybe not a veteran free agent just hanging around out there that maybe you can look at? Um, well, we explored that, um, but the, the you, they have to uh, you know when you have veteran free agents, they have to be two sides that have to work together on getting a contract done too. So. You know, there's certain uh, limitations we have um, when you go through and, and try to do something like that. So we felt this was a better avenue for us to take. Did Duke communicate that when they made the trade to get this pick, that was kind of what they had in mind is, is getting a punter? Um, no, I, I think it, uh, there were, we had a couple players, you know, there. I, I think obviously getting that other pick there certainly helped um, for ease of, you know, moving those picks onto our team. I, I think that that certainly helped having that extra one there. Is Charlie? Qualify as a fear of God returner? He's close. He, he's very close. I mean, uh, I'm very excited to get him, too. Um, you know, Troy and I both went up to uh, Purdue to work him out. Um, he was somebody that I evaluated you know, before the combine, liked what I saw at the combine. Then I liked it even more when I went up to, uh, to see him work out. Um, he's a sure-handed guy. Um, you know, he was the um, 2021 Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Year. And, uh, you know, he... Uh, uh, decided to move on, go to Purdue to get some catches um, at, at receiver, and I think he proved that. I think his numbers went down as a returner, but uh, they skyrocketed, and, and he probably put himself in the position he's in because of the, the what he did on offense to show that he's well-rounded. Like he led the, led college football, I think, in, in catches. So, but but he is he is uh, he's an explosive player. He's had a touchdown on, on punt return. returns, had a touchdown on a kickoff return. Um, he's a good cutter. He has great quickness, and. Uh, um, had, a, had a really good workout that day with me up there. <clears throat> Back to what you said about, you know, that Brad Robbins brought something you guys haven't seen in a while. Exactly what do you feel like you see from him that you guys haven't seen in a while? Like well, hang time. I, I think this guy really gets the ball up in the air really well, you know. And, and obviously, there is something to playing in this, you know, climate in the country that does, that does matter to me some. Um, he's obviously played in a lot of big games at, at Michigan. Um, the other attractive thing too is he held, you know, for Jake Moody, who was a third round pick this year too. So it, it uh, I feel really good about, you know, the other half of his job, which is holding. So um, he's very well rounded. He's mature, um, but I like the fact that he got the, he can get the ball up in the air for us. You, you think this pick is probably a byproduct of specifically how the AFC Championship game ended, how that game got ended the way it did? Do you guys maybe draft a punter? Or? Oh, I don't know that that changes. I don't know that that changes that portion of it. I think at the end of the year, you evaluate what you have and, and what you'd like to do to potentially improve your team, whether it's one game or there's a course of ten games or whether there's a course of twenty games, whatever it may be. And if you feel like you have a chance to bring in competition and, and maybe improve your situation, that's that's what you do. How hopeful are you that you guys now have used a draft pick on this position now have maybe solidified a spot that's kind of been a question mark over the last couple of years? Yeah, I, I, I think this helps with that certainly. Yeah, uh, you know, we, uh, I feel very confident in, in Brad's ability to come in here and, and do what we need him to do to be an effective punter in this division. I remember you, you worked out at a lot pre-draft. Like, how much uh, did you work out uh, with Robbins, and what did you see from him when you worked him out in person? Or did you? I did. Yeah, yeah I did. It's a nice you know, a trip up to Ann Arbor. Um, drove up there. He met me on Good Friday. <laughs> um, and uh, I thought he had a really good workout that day. It was kind of cool and kind of windy. Um, but, uh, you know, he displayed everything that uh, um, all the things that I wanted to see, you know, out of a punter, he showed that day. Um, you know, and, and like I said, he, he's really mature, too. Um, and, and I think that m means a lot, too, for that position, um, especially when you're dealing, you know, with we, we got three young guys now, you know, all within, you know, the first three years of their career here. And uh, um, so he's a, he's a mature guy. And uh, He'll bring a lot to that uh, position group. Aaron, you said with Evan McPherson, I think it was, that it just sounded different. There was a mm -hmm. sound yeah. that the foot made hitting, yeah. striking the ball. Mm -hmm. With a punter mm -hmm. in this 
particular case like Brad, same thing or different? Yeah, no, it, it's, I, I think you do feel the same thing. I, I think the workout that Evan had was very unique. I, I'd never felt that before. I, I felt it with, with other punters working out. And I, I think everybody has a different set of clubs, you know, in their bag. So, some guys, you know, hit good seven irons. Some guys hit drivers really well. Um, you know, th this guy really does a good job with, with great control. You know, I, I've been talking about hang time a lot. I, I think he's also a very, very effective directional punter. Um, he does a really good job of, of uh, uh, working the ball into the boundaries. You know, he understands weather patterns, weather conditions very, very, very well, um, which is a, a big bonus, um, you know, here in this division too. And uh, so, you know, there are a lot of positive, positive, positive things that I, I felt from not only the workout in Indianapolis, but also the workout up there in Ann Arbor too that led us to this spot. You want a punter is especially college level, they want to blast it away as far mm -hmm. as they can, you know, average 49 yards a punt. Is there a maturity level there for a guy who's concentrating 100%. on yeah. hang time and direction? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, he understands that, that net is, you know, I, I think the difficult, it's becoming increasingly difficult, you know, with, with the way that the rule changes or the rule differences are in college football, the, it's our league, you know, in, in college football, everybody can release on the snap. So hang time is not a um, premium thing for a lot of college punters. So it's difficult to evaluate, okay, you know, this guy can get the ball 50 yards down the field, but it's under four seconds of hang time. And you can get away with that in college football. We proved that you can't do that. And we can't get away with that in our league. And, uh, but, but I do think being a part of the program that Brad was a part of in Michigan, you know, being around a, a coach, I mean, his, his a position coach is He's got a last name of Harbaugh too, and so he understands the um, what what the premium is of not exposing your team to some of the returners that you could face, and you know in terms of the distance that they got to catch the ball. So that is a, a huge, huge, huge bonus for me. That, that regard, that exact thing right there. During the course of the draft, uh, you drafted players with great foot speed. You've mm -hmm. increased your team speed overall. How many guys do you look at and say I'm going to get some special team snaps out of? some of these people? Well, I think almost every one of them yeah. that we've, we've taken so far are going to potentially have some type of role, you know, with me, whether it's, you know, our, our first round pick, um, you know, it's obviously been well documented what we got in battle too. He's a, a very, very experienced guy. DJ Turner is one of the fastest DBs, if not the fastest DB, um, you know, at the combine. So Charlie, we know we, we've already kind of talked about what we're going to get out of him. There, there's a lot of positive, positive things. Even Chase Brown did some of it earlier on in his career at uh, Illinois. So there, there's a lot of positive, positive things about each one of these guys that uh, um, I think that uh, are going to really enhance what we do. You, you, this draft, uh, you, know, you, you didn't need an opening day stat. You needed it filled and bulked up. I mean, did you do that as far? I mean, in the first place, you look to a special teams. Just on a, looking at it, first blush. Is yeah, I kind of think that's it's kind of what – Lap is, is kind of referring to. I, I think all these guys are going to be help us on. If they're not, you know, day one starters for us, they're, they're going to help me in a big way. Um, each one of these guys, we, you know, we'll certainly be able to find a role and something productive for each one of these guys to do. And the positive thing is, is each one of these guys have really played, you know, on special teams. So in their college career. You mentioned Chase Brown. You mentioned uh, Charlie Jones. What about Jordan Battle? What do you see from him on special teams? I know we've talked about. Yeah. A lot of that yesterday. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple guys, when I sit on all these interviews at the Combine, you know, and especially all the skill position players, and, you know, you come out of there with a feeling that after, when you get done talking to one of these guys, you're like, man, if, if there's any way we can get that guy on our team, we want that guy on our team. Just from a 15-minute interview or 15-minute conversation. And that was one of the guys that, you know, I put a big red star on, like, we want this guy on our team. I think he's he's uh, very well rounded. He's he's very instinctive. Uh, um, he understand he understands the game. You can tell he's been obviously very well coached. He's been part of a great program there at Alabama. And he, but he's had to play. He's had to play a lot of special teams. And he's been productive. He's had a lot of tackles in his career. And and uh, you know he'll have a huge role for us here. How high on the priority list going into the draft was addressing returner, trying to find one of those explosive guys like Charlie, and then also a punter. Well, I, I think it it all kind of you know evolves as the draft evolves. I, I think going into it, I go into it every year thinking that you know maybe we don't have a premium need a kicker this year, maybe we don't have a premium need a long snapper, but you know I, I felt like we needed to enhance, we needed to bring some competition to the to the punting position, and and uh, 
Um, you know, and if the right returner happened to fall to us, one that we liked and one that was available at the right time and at the right price, then why not take a chance on one of those guys and uh, see if it enhances your team? So, you know, I, I think it kind of changes and evolves as the day goes on. But, but, uh, um, but certainly with with the punting position, I thought it was a, it was a spot that that uh, I'd like to bring some competition into. Yeah, Michigan State. State. The Michigan State punter got drafted. Mm -hmm. You've got Robbins. Were these the two guys that you thought could come in and compete right away, or were there more? No, I, I think that these are the those are the top two guys in my mind. There was another one that was that could I think could have potentially figured in. I think he got taken a couple picks after after we picked Brad, so maybe we had him slotted halfway close. But I I, I do think that uh, uh, all three of those guys um, have the opportunity to have productive NFL careers. You know. Hey, this is the pet. Oh, you're good. Do you think this is the fastest by team since you've been here? Um, that, that's hard for me to say right right now, Jeff. I, um, you know, I, I do like the speed that we've 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 uh, added today for sure over the last two days, whatever it is, three days, however many days it's been. I'd lose track, um, but I, but I do um, certainly like all the positions that we've added. The speed that each one of those guys these guys are all sub four or five guys that can you know can run. You've been here now, you've been here a long time. All right, the, these last couple of years, has there been one thread with this draft? I mean, with the way you guys draft, it's being, not that you've changed, but is there anything, I mean, have grades become more important? Have, I mean, what's, what's been maybe kind of the hallmark in these last, you know, the last three, four drafts? Well, I, I think that the, the job that Duke and Mike and, and, and really all the scouts, Steve and, and Andrew and, and Christian and, and Trey, the, the job that they do of lining up our draft board after conversations they've had with us is spectacular. I mean, it, we're, they're real close. You know, as the, the draft goes down, we're, we're very close on all the positions. And the one thing that I don't think that, that we've done over the course of the last probably three or four or five drafts, we haven't really had to reach a lot. You know, we, we've, they've drafted by based on the grades that they have and based on what's on the board, you know. Um, and, and I think they've stayed very consistent. I think there are times when you know, you know, the, the boat starts to go off the 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 uh, uh, you know the river here a little bit, and then we pull it right back on, and get it lined back up again, and you know, cooler heads sometimes prevail. But I, I think that the, they've stuck to the draft board. I think they've done a hell of a job of, of getting it lined up and putting the players in the proper order as they fit for us, not for everybody else, not for what the league value is, but how they fit for us. And uh, I think that's been the difference. Yeah, it seemed like one of those. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just want to follow this up. Now leave. It seemed like one of the, the what could have gone off the rails was in the third round. Yeah. And geez, you know, God, you need a back, you need a tight end, you need a, you know, uh, a running back or something. And yet, it looked like the state was a great there for for battle. I don't know. You know, that that was a spot that looked like you could help your offense. Well, I I, I think that uh, when we were sitting right there, I don't want to speak for the. the People to make that decision, but after sitting in the room, I, I think the consensus was that we have a high, high, high grade on a safety here, a safety that we felt was the top safety available and the top safety, you know, really maybe in the draft for us, the way we liked, we, we lined them up, and and so I think it's a that's a perfect example of, and it also hit us in a, in a potential position of a little need, you know, we we lost a couple guys there, it's been no secret, we had one in Nick and. And we had a chance to add another one here in, in uh, uh, Jordan, so it, it, it you know it, it fell right to us and worked out perfectly. But that was a chance for us to move and maneuver around a little bit, and we didn't. They they, they did a good job of, of being resilient and sticking to what the grades were. There's a mini run on punters in the yeah. last hour. The Patriots and the Rams just took one. Yeah. How knowledgeable were you guys about those needs for other teams? And do you feel like had you not had the extra six round pick? He maybe would have been your first six-round pick. Um, no, I, I trust me. I have a nice little sheet sitting in front of me that has the, the the teams that have identified that have a need upon her. I have every pick that they have, and so I was very in tune with with who those teams were, what picks they had, where we felt like we needed it to, to uh, if we're going to do it, where we needed to do it, and if we didn't do it here, we potentially have the we lost the opportunity to to acquire him somehow, some way, and so. Oh, believe me, I was very in tune with uh, um, what other teams. I, I can't be in other teams' mind when they're going to pull the trigger because it's, it's different than talking about it and, and actually doing it. But uh, trust me, I was very in tune with what teams had a need upon her.
think the last hunter the Bengals drafted was Huber. Yeah. Expecting 14 years out of the process. Well, it would be a pretty economical deal <laughs> for uh, everybody. You know, it, it's, it was obviously a very unique – and trust me, you know, uh, when the, the pick in the fifth round came about, of course, you know, one of the first texts I'm getting is from Kevin. And uh, he said, you guys going to pull the trigger here? Like, well, <laughs> sign up to me, bud. Um, but, no, I, I think for, you know, we were in a very, very unique position with Kevin. I feel very fortunate to have, have been around him as long as I've, I, I was. He was a productive player for us for a long, long time. And if we were able to get, you know, something like that out of Brad, then that's a hell of a deal.